Hey everybody, it's uh, April 23rd, 2020. Are you having problems remembering which day it is? Um, I know I am. So I thought I'd change the setting a little bit today, sit in front of a bookshelf, make it look like I know something. Um, so we're going to be talking about the sacrament of the altar, or communion, or Eucharist, or... Um, the Lord's Supper, or other various names uh, that you may have uh, learned uh, about the sacrament. Here's what Luther says in uh, the Catechism. It is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ under the bread and wine instituted by Christ himself for us to eat and drink. So the phrase we Lutherans use is that um, Christ is in, with, and under those elements that we use, whether it's the wafers or it's a piece of bread, um, whether it's a cup or um, <clears throat> a chalice or however it is that we drink and eat those things in whatever forms and shapes those uh, take, um, that Christ is in with and under those things. And, and as we take those things, we receive Christ. We receive Christ who comes to us um, in that bread and wine. Where is this written? Um, Luther says, the holy evangelist Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and St. Paul write, and you know, talks about in the night in which he was betrayed. Those words that um, we are so familiar with that the leader expresses to, um, to reconnect us to that larger story, <clears throat> to remind us that this is a scriptural mandate, that we do this because Christ told us to. Um, so those words come from Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and then also from um, Paul's letters. What is the benefit of such eating and drinking? The words given for you and shed for you for the forgiveness of sin show us that forgiveness of sin, life, and salvation are given to us in this sacrament through these words because where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. So when the person distributing communion says, the bread of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, Again, connecting you to that story and giving you those things that give us forgiveness and life. Those things are true. Those things are valid. Those things are important uh, to us. How can eating and drinking do such a great thing, Luther asks. Eating and drinking certainly do not do it, but rather the words that are recorded, given for you and shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. These words, when accompanied by the physical eating and drinking, are the essential thing in the sacrament. So again, <clears throat> as I shared with uh, baptism, it is the word, the command, um, and these physical elements, the bread and the wine. When those two things are connected, then we receive what Christ says. This is for the forgiveness of our sins, and this is for life and for salvation. These things are given. It's a gift that is um, given to us. <clears throat> As I talk about this, um, it's been a long time since we've received communion. It's been a long time for me, um, the longest time uh, that I can ever think of in my uh, adult life um, when uh, I have not had the opportunity, the chance to, um, to receive the sacrament. Um, <clears throat> it's getting hard. It really is. Um, that first Saturday night when we uh, get to uh, have worship and after everyone else has received and I have um, given communion to uh, the communion assistant, um, that's going to be a special moment when that person, whether it's a man or a woman, turns to me and says, the body of Christ given for you. And then I hold the cup, and they pour in the blood of Christ shed for you. I could almost cry thinking about it right now. I'm looking forward to it as much as you are. It is this gift that is given to us, and it is hard that we can't receive it. But in between the last time we received it, and that blessed day when we will receive it again. We are strengthened by the word. We are strengthened by these opportunities to connect um, virtually. And we are connected uh, by prayer and through that community of believers, the, the community of saints, 
of every time and in every place. And so let that be our strength and our support and our encouragement until we can do that again. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, for the beauty of your blessings that we receive every day. And Lord, we long to receive the sacrament again, to be gathered around your altar, to receive that bread and wine, your body, your blood, your forgiveness, your grace, your love. We long to see it, receive it again. So until then, Lord, strengthen us, support us, encourage us with every way you can, whether it's virtually or through the the virtual body of Christ. Strengthen and support us and encourage us, Lord. We ask you to be with those who are dealing with COVID, whether they are healthcare workers or those who are sick. We pray for those who are mourning those who have died, uh, even in our own community. There's been some folks this week, and so we ask you to give comfort to the families and to those who cannot gather in the way that they would want to, to be supportive and encouraged for those families. Give them your peace and let them know that the power of the resurrection is not diminished. We give you thanks and bless. We ask you to bless all of us wherever we might be. In your son's name we pray. Amen.